Hey guys, I'm Jax Austin, and this is Dan, the Adventure Bus. I used to bartend. I had this boss that was just always on people's ass and very negative. And so I just kind of got sick of him after a while. <laughs> and so I was in this meeting in Chicago and right then and there, I just had a realization. Why do I want to put effort into something that I don't like when I could be putting some effort into something that I would love to do? I never went back to work. I had some savings. Me and a friend of mine were on a road trip in Big Sur. I don't know why, but I was like, hey, what if I got a school bus? and traveled around. Sure enough, right when we turned around this hairpin curve, what was in front of us? A school bus. He pulls over, of course, I pull over right next to him. I ran up to the bus, asked him all these questions. One of the most important things they told me was like, you can stay on public land for like two weeks for free. And I've been using that so much on my trip. I love public lands. I prefer everything to be a public land as opposed to somebody with a fence around it because I would like everybody to share it. I flew all the way to Philadelphia to get Dan. The bus is named after my uncle Dan. Unfortunately, a couple years ago, he passed away. In his honor, I named the bus after him. This is Dan the Adventure Bus. It is a 2003 E450 Super Duty with a 7.3 liter power stroke, which by the way, is the best engine to get for a diesel. And it's a dually, so it's about as wide and as long as these little short buses get. Some people think that this is a paint job, not to disappoint anyone, is a graphic sticker wrap. It's just a huge sticker. It's like vinyl or something. Above that is my number one favorite upgrade to the bus. I installed AstroTurf. If anybody has a school bus and you want your rooftop deck and you don't know how to build one, all you need is some caulking and AstroTurf. That's it. Up top, I have 320 watts of AM solar. These are reclaimed hardwoods from the Northeast. Um, I believe it's mixed species. Couldn't tell you what species, but I know I like them. Underneath this is half inch foam insulation and some MDO for the subfloor. I also have up here a lot of sound insulation. Diesels are super, super noisy. One other of my favorite upgrades is the lights. I installed LED lights. So it was just a pretty basic setup here with some cedar. I torched it a bit. I hid some wires under here and then the LEDs go on top. Under the bench is where all of the energy is. I have a 255 amp hour AGM battery, 2000 watt inverter. I have a little charger that charges off the alternator as well because I'm always on the go. All the wood in here is all reclaimed and even the drawer pulls are from the same store and who knows how old they are. I know these drawer fronts here have square nails in them and I was told that they're from the 1890s. Locks on the side, just a simple dowel. What I have for my opinion of myself is a pretty organized little system. Back here is where all the action happens and also where I'm keeping my broken door. Life on the road is that sometimes things break. So I'm in the process of redoing this door. The door goes over here. This is my one cooking utensil or vessel here. It's a pressure cooker. Comes in handy for all kinds of stuff. Down here, everything's pretty organized for the most part. I have a bunch of plastic bins. I got my Carver skateboard, which I really love. I grew up surfing, so a lot of people ask me, oh, that's a great open layout, but where's the shower? Where's the toilet? Well, you're about to see. This is called the dump trunk. This is where the nasty magic happens. <laughs> It was about 130 bucks. Originally, I really wanted a composting toilet, but a thousand bucks, dude, 
there's no way I'm gonna pay a thousand bucks to poop in your plastic box. You know what I mean? This is a sink, but honestly, I never really use it. So I'm thinking about replacing it with a sink stove burner uh, combo. Cause right now I'm just using a camping stove kind of thing. But under here we got storage for two seven gallon tanks and a few jackets. Down here is just kind of like my food pantry for now. You know, if you do the van life or you're thinking about it, just know that you will be constantly upgrading and making changes to your house. It's just the way it is. And there's no one right way and there's no one wrong way. Just whatever suits your needs. Over here, we have a little fridge. For some reason, it stopped working the other day. It's still not working. So a couple of things I need to fix. Like I said, I'm a surfer. Grew up surfing at the beach. Used to work at a surf camp. This is my surfboard bag, which I never use. I got my surfboard, snowboard, wetsuits inside uh, the backpack. I also have a little heater in this corner. You can't really tell, but I am installing a shower next week. So there's gonna be a water tank over here. The heater is gonna be, didn't really think this out, but probably like right here. And then I'm gonna have an outside shower head so I can take a nice hot shower anywhere I want. So the bus, I paid uh, 5,500 bucks, all the materials and things like that, as well as engine problems, I would say about 10 and then I probably spent about four grand on labor. So more or less about 20. But if I did it over, I would be cutting costs left and right. You learn so much when you do this. I mean, I could do one half the amount of money, you know? To those people who are new to the van life or who are interested in the van life, it's amazing. I mean, clearly you have some obstacles. Space being one of them. How are you gonna take a poop? <laughs> How are you gonna shower? But I promise you, once you start doing it, all those things become so trivial. What you give up is small compared to what you are given. I mean, worst case scenario, you, you know, you try it out for a little while and then maybe it's not for you. You go back to an apartment, but you still have a vehicle to drive around town. Maybe it's your weekend adventure mobile. But I would say to commit to it full time, as far as traveling full time, you need to figure out how to make some money, if not save money. But if you are a student and you're going to school, one of the best books I read ever, and I'm not a reader, was Walden on Wheels. The guy put himself through grad school and owed nothing by the time he graduated. Worked in the summers, lived in the van on the Penn State parking lot. And I would say to those people who are going to school, don't have a lot of money, thinking about loans, don't do it. Go to school, but <laughs> live in a van. Or you're out of school, you got a bunch, racked up a bunch of money, great, live in a van. People work so hard and I just don't think it's fair. The cost of having an apartment is so expensive compared to what people make 